Before I go on talking about the official definition for the intermediate value theorem, I'm going to ask you to do an intuitive thinking exercise with me, just to warm up your brain for the intermediate value theorem later. So, in this exercise, we'll be talking about your height over the years. So let's plot a graph of your height versus your age with the height on the y-axis and with your age on the x-axis. Now, let's say at the age of 7, at the age of 7, say you were 4 feet tall. So your height was 4 feet tall. Okay, so at the age of 7, your height was 4 feet tall. So say this is you. Now, as time went by, you grew taller and taller. And let's say at the age of 16, you grew to be 6 feet tall. Okay, so at the age of 16, your height was 6 feet tall. Now, listen, I want you to pick a number between these two numbers. Go ahead. So pick any height between 4 feet tall and 6 feet tall. Any height. You got it? Cool. Say you pick 5. Sure, 5 is good. Because 5 is a number between 4 and 6. Okay, so say you pick 5 feet tall. Cool. Now. Just like a magician. I'm gonna take a wild guess. I'm guessing that at some point in time, at some point in time, between the ages of 7 and 16, your height must be exactly 5 feet tall. No more, no less. Exactly 5 feet tall. Am I right? <laughs> You're probably thinking now, Psst, I know that. You don't have to tell me. That is just an intuition. Well, guess what? You're absolutely right. It is an intuition. An intermediate value theorem is an intuition. And let me show the intuition on the graph. So assuming your growth curve between the ages of 7 and 16 goes something like this. And human growth is continuous. And the key word here is continuous. Because you cannot go from 4 feet tall and the very next second, boom, 6 feet tall. That's impossible, right? And since human growth is continuous, continuous, then going from 4 feet tall to 6 feet tall, you must have gone through every intermediate height. Right? See? The red dots here are the intermediate heights between 4 feet tall and 6 feet tall. Then 5 feet tall, which just happened to be one of the intermediate heights. And this could possibly happen when you were, say, 10 years old, or 14 years old, or 12.5 years old. But one thing we can be certain, though, is that 5 feet tall being an intermediate value between 4 and 6 on the y-axis, then 5 feet tall must happen at a intermediate age, right? must happen at an intermediate age between 7 years old and 16 years old on the x-axis. And that intuition is what intermediate value theorem is all about. So, let's take a look at the official definition for the intermediate value theorem, a very intuitive theorem. Let's go. If, 
on the closed interval A and B. So between A and B, we have a continuous function. See, the word continuous is the key word here. So a function is continuous between point A and point B. And at point A, we have a value of f of A. And at point B, we have a value of f of B. Now, if you were to pick a number between f of A and f of B, so pick any number between f of A and f of B. So let's say we pick this number. We call that number n. So n is an intermediate value between f of A and f of B. Now, according to the intermediate value theorem, there must be at least one number c between A and B. c between A and B, such that f of c is equal to n. So the value at point C is f of C, right? That must be equal to n. And that is the official definition for the intermediate value theorem. Now, let me use an example to show you why continuous is such a critical requirement for the intermediate value theorem to be true. So let's take a look at this example here. We have a function that's not continuous. By the way, how do you spot a function not being continuous? Well, that's easy, right? So let's say on the close interval here, between point A and point B, if I were to draw a continuous function, look at how I draw the curve. Look at my pencil. My pencil will stay on the paper the whole time. See, when I draw a continuous curve, I will never lift my pencil, right? Now, look at how I draw the curve for a function that's not continuous. I go like this. Guys, look. At this point, because what I have to do, I will have to lift my pencil and jump to here, and then draw the curve again, right? And any time I lift my pencil, that function is not continuous. Okay, cool. Now, so guys, on the closed interval A and B, and let's say point A has a value of 4, and point B has a value of 6. Okay, now, if I were to ask you to pick a number between 4 and 6 on the y axis, any number, right? So let's say you, let's say you pick 5, okay? then 5 is an intermediate value between 4 and 6, right? Now, guys, check this out. For a function that's not continuous, then the function does not take on the intermediate value 5. See, the function might take on some, in some intermediate values. For example, the function might still take on the value 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, right? And on this end, the function might still take on the value 5.9, 5.6, right? 5.2, right? However, in this case, the function does not take on the intermediate value 5, right? See, look, the value 5 is not on the function, is not on the curve, right? So for a function that's not continuous, then the function is not obligated to take on every intermediate value. It might take on some intermediate values, but it will not take on every intermediate value. In this case, it does not take on the intermediate value phi, because phi is not on the function, it's not on the curve. Right? You get it? So that's why, inter that's why continuous is such a critical requirement for the intermediate value theorem to be true. Next, I'm going to explain why a continuous function must take on an intermediate value at least 
once. At least once. First, let's take a look at this continuous function. The intermediate value n is taken on once, right at this one point on the graph of this continuous function. However, if we happen to have a continuous function with a graph like this, then in this case, the intermediate value n is taken on more than once. See? The intermediate value n is taken on here at this point and at this point and at this point on the graph of this continuous function. So in this case, the intermediate value n is taken on 1, 2, 3, 3 times in total. So as you can see, a continuous function can take on an intermediate value once, as shown in the diagram on the left, or more than once, as shown in the diagram on the right. And therefore, the reason for stating at least once in the official definition for the intermediate value theorem.